What's up, everybody? It's Monday, and it's Master Motivation. My name is Jason Flame, and today, my special guest is Ms. Sean Nelson. I'm so excited to have her on the show today. I have been looking forward to this one uh, for a bit. As some of you know, the last couple of weeks, I have started this series, and my whole purpose, this was my 2021 goal, if you will, or... Um, I don't really believe in resolutions necessarily, but uh, my I wanted to really highlight the people that I thought are just a light in the world, people that motivate other people. And Sean was at the top of the list for sure. If anybody follows her on social media, you know that she's got the spunk, the energy, and just a heart of gold. So Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, first of all, that's the best intro ever. Thank you so much for that. It is an honor. And when you asked, I was like, what? Me? <laughs> that's uh -huh. so cool. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So, you know, um, we met, I believe the very first time we met was at Pinecrest back in like when our kids were really little, right? Little, little. And then I think I got to know you guys better when my boys were little. They went to the studio when they were little itty bits, like in the Little Dragons program. They were tiny. Right. Yeah. So we go back quite a ways and I have followed you on, on social media and uh, just really love the work that you do. And I can't wait for everybody to hear your story because you have a very powerful story to tell. Uh, so let's just dive right into it and talk a little bit about your background, your childhood, just kind of where you're from. Yeah, absolutely. So for everybody that's watching, um, I live in a small town, same, same town as uh, Jason and his family. I was born and raised most of my life in uh, mid Texas and um, had always wanted to fall into medicine my whole life. I wanted the dream of being a doctor, dream of being a nurse, and I ended up actually going to nursing school. And I was a registered nurse for 13 years and had always done that in that capacity. And um, service was always has always been something that was very passionate um, to me. And I never thought I would ever be anywhere outside of medicine. And um, I have three teenagers, say a prayer for me. I have two 17-year-old boys and an 18-year-old daughter. Um, they are just, they're my world and I love them so much. I'm married to an amazing man. We're going to be together for, or married for 20 years this July and together for 27. And uh, he's the best partner I could ever ask for. And it just you know, showing up every day and just living life as full as I can is what I try to do every day. So you, you grew up uh, in Texas and moved out here to this small little place called Moore Park, right? Yes. I, yes. I've Moore Park myself, myself since 93. When did you guys move here? We moved or we moved here when I was in fifth grade. So I was, I was little, I had already, you know, we moved right before junior high or middle school and um, yeah, just uprooted, uprooted in the middle of the night, actually. Um, my, my mom had left my father and I ended up being raised by a really strong, powerful, amazing single mom. And uh, that's how we came to California. It was, it was gnarly and awesome. Gnarly and awesome. All yeah. Right. Time. Uh, you know, that that um, that explains a lot of because you're a very, in my opinion, I think that you're a very powerful, strong woman. And and the reason I think that and the reason I believe that is the way that you empower other women. You know, there it's you know, when I look at social media, uh, you know, it's like there's good days and there's bad days. And there's uh, the unfollow button has gotten really, really helpful uh, because I have a lot of friends on Facebook that I just don't want to hear what they have to say. Right. Uh, but I don't want to inf unfriend them because I don't want them to be all upset and then talk about me. Um, <laughs> you know, um, it, again, anybody that follows you knows how much you, you know, empowering other women. It, it's one of the, the, the things that I admire about you most uh, because it's so easy for anybody. I won't just say women to be catty and just, you know, backstabbing. And so to know that, you know, um, you were raised by, by your mom and she was a strong woman. It, it really speaks volumes about you as well. Um, talk about your early years, um, you know, getting ready to go to school and become an RN and yeah. the information of what happened from there. Cause that's yeah. you know, a story. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I actually went, wanted to go to school to be a doctor and, um, but being raised, you know, single mom house, I was the kid that lived in a different town, but went to school in Moore Park because the schools were better. Um, I was latchkey kid. I was home a lot on my own. Um, I was 
I worked a telemarketing job after school when I was in high school for Olin Mills. I was the annoying person that called you to sell you a portrait package. And I, I had grit and hustle right out of the gate. And it was because I had to help my mom pay bills. You know, all of my friends were off, you know, doing things and doing stuff that teenage, teenage girls should do. And I was, I was hustling to pay the gas bill because I knew we needed, I knew we needed, I knew we needed lights and gas and heat and all of that stuff. Um, so my upbringing is something that I'm so incredibly grateful for. And I learned um, early on, actually, that um, the way that I was raised was amazing because my mom did such a great job of um, putting that divide in. And I know in families that is something that can be perceived as negative. But the way that my father was, she tried her best to shield that. I was always too much. I was always too loud, too colorful, too, too energetic, too boisterous, too everything. And that is what makes me successful today is I am too much for a lot of people. And but that's OK. But that's how I grew up. And um, as I started to um, choose colleges and go to school and all of the things, I quickly realized that my mom was doing her very best, but could not afford college, could not afford medical school, all of that stuff. So I ended up going to junior college. And in junior college, I started the nursing program because I was still obsessed with medicine, still obsessed with um, that whole aspect. But what I learned throughout that process it, is it wasn't the science and the medicine that I was obsessed with. It was helping people and realizing that, you know, we're all human. Everybody's different. Being there for somebody in their time of need and crisis was what was what fueled me, what filled my soul. And so I was a registered nurse for 13 years. I worked in all kinds of capacities, um, surgery, labor and delivery, you know, all in nursing. You can you can swap around a lot. But where I ended up was working um, in drug and alcohol detoxing. And I did, I worked in our local jail system within the county. And then I also worked for a doctor in Los Angeles and I would do celebrity detoxing. So I would detox people from their same ailment. I'm treating for the same things, but at completely different stages and economic stages really of their life. And so that was a huge lesson for me because um, when I was sitting with people that we see in movies and on stage singing and all of that stuff, they really just want to hear about my trip to the grocery store. They want to hear about the mundane, everyday things. And they legitimately were the same as maybe the inmates that I was caring for. Everyone's hurt and everyone's, um, everyone's tragedy and devastation came from the same kind of source that triggered them into their addiction issues. And so that was just a really great lesson for me and something I'm incredibly grateful for. I've since retired from nursing and moved on. But that was probably the greatest lesson that I had ever learned in my nursing career. That's I, it's something I actually never knew about you. And, and thank you for sharing all of that because, you know, that's such a, a powerful opportunity to serve in someone's life. I, I have another friend who I, I hope to be interviewing in the near future who became uh, an alcohol and drug counselor after being an alcoholic and yeah. drug addicted. Yeah. And he makes such a difference in people's lives. And um, I, I can't wait to share his story. I'll, I'll, I'll save his name for now, but thank you for Absolutely. sharing. And so that led you now um, into your next path and your next journey and talk a little bit more about what you're doing now. Yeah, so people will ask me, Sean, what do you do? And um, really, I coach and empower women in business and in skincare and makeup in particularly. I am actually more of a tomboy. Um, I was teasing Jason before we started. I have tennis shoes and shorts on, and I'm like business up top, you know, party up top, total like comfort down below. Um, I, being a nurse, I did not wear a lot of makeup. I didn't know anything about it. I did work in aesthetics, skincare through medicine. Um, briefly, and I loved it. But it wasn't about that. It was about empowering women. And I had a girlfriend of mine say, oh my gosh, Sean, you have to try this particular product. And I said, no way, I'm not doing that. She goes, you need to sell it. I'm not a salesperson. I don't like sales. I don't like this business model. I was, I was completely against all of it, actually. Um, but there was something inside of me. I'm a big believer in um, energy and intention and you know, our path is there and just kind of presents us as our choice if we take it or not. And I thought there's something driving me and I have to find out what this is. Right now, I don't like it. I don't know what this is, but let's see. 
And um, the business was completely on social media. And at the time, I didn't know why I needed it, but I was working full time as a nurse. And I had started to get really wrapped up into the way medicine had turned into, you know, very insurance driven, very um, rules and regulation driven to that aspect. But when I couldn't treat a patient because they didn't have a specific insurance or the, the money wasn't going to be exchanged appropriately, that was really hard for me because I knew what a patient needed to be helped. But then on the flip side, I really couldn't give them everything that we had because uh, finances. So I started to fall less in love with nursing because my the service aspect was going away for me. And that was my driver. So when I started doing this, I was working two full time nursing jobs. So for those of you not familiar with nursing, it is shift work and it's three 12 hour shifts is one job. So I had two of those. So I was gone six day, six days a week for 12 hours a day. At the time, my kids were little. Um, I had tw the twin boys and my daughter, so they were all, you know, a year and plus months apart. Um, so it was crazy and it was chaotic. And my husband and I were like ships in the wind. And this opportunity came along, and I was very resistant. But I said, you know what? What do I have to lose? Let's just see what this is. And very quickly, I realized that um, this wasn't about makeup and it wasn't about skincare. It was about empowerment and service. And it's connected to a nonprofit that helps women that have, were sexually abused as children. And so that was like, oh, that is what I need. I, I there's this is I took care of so many patients um, in my drug and alcohol rehab capacity that were affected by sexual abuse. And I knew that that was such a trigger for so many things to come. So I thought, OK, I'm going to dive into this. And lo and behold, the universe had my back. And right after I had started my business, and just as I was picking up and getting success, our son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So I had to be at the school all the time to administer insulin. I had to be there for field trips and do all of the things. And it just, I had this wake up call like, oh my gosh, this was meant for me. You know, God put this in my position. And I, this is the reason why I'm being successful. I can serve all of these women and I can take care of my kids. So not only was I able to be there for my son, I was able to be there for the other two as well because they were, you know, in, grade school at the time, because I've been doing this particular business for eight years. So people may have missed this little detail here, but you lead over 15,000 women all over the globe. Uh, okay. Do you want to mention your company name? Yes, that's fine. Go, go ahead. Oh, I, I work for Unique. So it is a direct sales social selling company. And we teach women how to operate a business on social media. Um, we have, I have very few that do it from home because social media is so um, accessible. And especially with COVID and all of the restrictions that are different all over the globe, this has been a really great way for them to still bring income into their families, keep um, the social connection because we're all lacking that terribly right now. And I was just, it was so beneficial. And did I ever think we would have 15,000 women under this umbrella that I am I am inspiring and motivating every day. I want to say, no, I never thought that would happen. But yes, I had the expectation that I wanted to touch as many people as I could. So we're not stopping at 15,000. We're growing fast. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that, that, that number to me is just, it, it's, it's more than amazing because the, you figure one person can touch 15,000 how many other people are the people that you're working with, right? And that's, right. you know, and and you you got into this and and you talked a lot about not wanting to be a salesman. Um, you know, my my wife runs a a, a company on, online as well, and you've been helping her a ton. Um, and, and that's <laughs> right. <laughs> she bought that just off with Jackie. Um, but you know, she was the same way. She did not want to be a salesperson. It wasn't yeah. about the sales. I mean, she genuinely, when she sees someone post something that she promoted and they bought it and they're wearing it and posting pictures, super like th that feeling is so great. But oh. you went from someone that didn't want to be a sales uh, a salesperson, um, learning all about social media, which is, I mean, just endless. You know, just when you think you've got it things change and it, it continues. Um, but also talk about how Unique supports um, women and how you support the, the sexual abuse for women. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's my favorite part of it is because we are mission driven. Um, most days I actually don't even wear makeup, you guys. <laughs> I don't. It's one of those fluke things. I had a class before this that I taught. 
Uh, but what we do is one in four girls will be sexually abused by the time they're 18 years old and one in six boys. And when I learned that statistic, I really did not realize that that was such the impact. I thought you know, every every single person I can guarantee you thinks, oh, gosh, I don't know anybody or that's never going to happen to me or my kids. But really, in essence, I can guarantee you that in your circle of friends, there's probably at least one person that, you know, if not more that has been affected by being a victim of, of sexual abuse as a child. So what we do is we have a retreat called the Haven Retreat, and it's absolutely free. We have one in Lehigh, Utah, and we have one in Georgia. Um, we're actually working on an international one right now in Mexico, and we're actually working on a retreat specialized just for men, because right now the retreats are for women, but knowing that men and women are so different, vastly different in the way that they're going to receive therapies and the way that it affects them. Um, we needed a whole new model for that. So as of right now, um, all the participant has to do is apply for the retreat. She has to be clean and sober um, and stable at the time of going and um, actually application. So she's kind of past that point and um, is ready to take on her healing process. When they go to retreat, it's four days and they do not hash out their retreat. And if anybody listening, um, it's uniquefoundation.org is where you can apply. You can learn all about it. So they don't um, relive their, their abuse. Um, they basically find hope and healing and reclaim their life from that point because depression, anxiety, alcohol, drug abuse, there's so many things, self-confidence issues come from that. And when somebody is abused, um, it can range from something um, I was touched inappropriately with my, you know, clothed or to more intense, obviously. Um, but we start to, as women, we start to justify, well, mine wasn't as bad as yours. So maybe, maybe I don't deserve to go to that retreat. No, you deserve to go to that retreat. So then afterwards, they're followed for a year with our therapist team. And they actually have support groups that they meet with in person and online for the years following. So they can be in a community of everybody. And um, the really cool part about this is, is that through our business, 10% of our proceeds every single time everyone, anyone makes a purchase, we do 10%. Plus our customers have the option to round up their order. And we raise about $40,000 a month just for that small roundup to make it, you know, add 22 cents or whatever to your order. Um, but also we have a website called defendinnocence.org. And that is a website that teaches people that are care for kids in any kind of capacity, coaches, teachers, um, nannies, aunts, uncles, grandmas, they teach, it teaches you how to have an age appropriate conversation with the child um, on finding out about the sexual abuse or how to um, be aware of the grooming patterns, be aware of everything that is involved in that. So to put a stop to it before the abuse actually happens instead of picking up the pieces afterwards. So I first, I want to invite you to post any of these links uh, in our chat, um, and, and you can do that right here. Um, and if you guys are watching, if you want to just drop a quick comment, or if you have a question for Sean, uh, please put any questions in the comments below. Um, let us know uh, who you are, because sometimes it comes up as Facebook user, um, because we've got two different uh, two different streams going on. And... Um, and I'm going to copy these for you and put those in. But okay. yeah, if you have any any questions for Sean, please, uh, you know, absolutely ask those. I'm posting the comment, uh, the link right now to uh, uniquefoundation.org. Um, you know, people really don't realize, you know, things like this about unique. You know, like you said, uh, unique people think makeup, right? Yeah. And 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 they watch you put the makeup on and yeah. and and. But there's this bigger force. And, you know, it's one of the reasons I really wanted to to let people hear your story and let hear uh, let pe more people hear about what it stands for um, so that they know who and, and what you stand for and what you're supporting. Um, quick comment here. Uh, Kevin Kowalczyk, K. Swift. Uh, thanks, Sean, for changing my, so, so many lives. Image the uh, imagine the impact you're making on thousands of lives, changing futures, breaking cycles that may have existed for generations. It's amazing. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Thank was one of our past past guests, and he's an awesome, awesome human being, changing lives as well. And you know that's what this whole thing about master motivation is about is is letting everybody know about all these different ways that that we can help people. So you know, let's get back to um, 
let's get back to you know how you started. What were some of the the challenges that you found early on? I mean, because it's not easy to get to fifteen thousand people, right? It wasn't yeah. like that happened overnight. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit more about some of your challenges, how you overcome those challenges or overcame those challenges, and some of the people that helped you along the way. Absolutely. Um, I still overcome challenges every day. I think if you don't stop growing and you don't stop learning, you're dying, honestly. When I first started, I had never um, worked on social media. I probably had 500 Facebook friends and I had never done any kind of sales in that capacity. And um, to be honest, uh, direct sales as a label in the industry sometimes comes with a negative connotation of people saying, oh, it's a pyramid scheme and all of that. I mean, I will, I will eat crow and be honest. I was one of those people. I didn't believe in the business model. I thought, well, this is like just such a sham, but I was uneducated. And so once I became educated about what it really is and what it really does, and that is, it is the perfect business model, especially for a woman that wants to be home and build a business and contribute to her family while still making an income and an impact was the biggest thing. One of the biggest challenges that I had in the beginning is I showed up as somebody else. I showed up and I thought I had to walk differently and talk differently and run my business differently because I looked at all of these people that were successful in my industry that all of a sudden um, were posting pictures of Lamborghinis and holding wads of money and all of the things. And is that potential possible with this business model? For sure. But I quickly learned that relatability goes a thousand times farther especially with women. When when a woman is looking at another woman, for example, doing her makeup, she wants to see herself in, in her. She wants to see the mishap. She wants to see her with no makeup on, bare skin, because I think as we, um, we tend to grow as women, we lose our girl. And I always encourage my team that I run is find your girl again. Find the girl that is gonna dance in the rain and jump off of a cliff with her best friend into the river and, and sing loud and dance on tables and all of that. We, we tend to lose that because of the expectations that kind of um, surround all of that. As humans in general, we tend to feel like we have to show up as somebody different. And I was that girl. I was the girl that was too loud and too much. And so getting back to that and being relatable was probably the biggest lesson that, the biggest lesson that I learned. And in this particular industry, it is honestly personal development with an income attached to it. It is becoming the best version of yourself, realizing that what other people think about you is really none of your business. If you're showing up in service every single day, literally I get up every day and my feet hit the floor and I just go, okay, show me who I need to serve today. Show me, show me who I need to help. And that's 100% what it's about. And the minute that you fall out of that, fall out of that realm, is when you'll start to have struggle and when you'll start to look inward and say, well, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. Who's the last person you helped? And it's not about the top dollar. Who's the last person you helped, regardless if you got paid or not? You know, that that speaks to me in so many ways um, because I, I've been a consultant in the martial arts industry for um, the past 10 to 12 years. And I know that I personally got caught up in the this is what it should look like. Yes. And 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 I'm not there or I'm I'm focused solely on this but the the whole point of being relatable and service uh you know two things that I that I really strive for in everything that I do and in, in my business and my family and my school um and and with these videos is you know just being just being the best version of yourself like you said I mean that's the most important thing cuz if we can all just be a little bit better than we were yesterday yes. we're really we're changing lives without even knowing it right because your energy is absorbed by everybody around you and and I know that you know, that's important for my family. It's really important for, for my family to read that energy and soak that energy from me, as I know that you do for, for your children and for your husband, because it's not always easy. You yeah, know? absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we have to connect in our in our trials. We have to connect in our struggle and people will, they will connect with you in your struggle. And I try to teach my girls is that share your story. Your story is so powerful. And the trials that you've gone to are powerful and take it just on the edge of you're not being a victim about it, but you're saying, listen, this happened to me kind of sucked. 
this is how I got over it. And this is how I became better by it. And that's how you teach people. It honestly has nothing to do with product, makeup, nothing has nothing to do with right. it. Well, we have, we have a quick question and, and, you know, just with that, um, I, I think that people are afraid of being vulnerable. People are afraid yeah. of showing, um, you, you know, we have a saying that the, the master has failed more than the beginner has ever tried. Yeah. And, you know, that's just something that, you know, we need to remember. But uh, my wife, Jackie, wants to ask, how does an as aspiring consultant keep from getting lost in the shuffle? Ah, that's a good question. Be yourself. So I always encourage my girls, um, like the mistake that I had made before, especially right now in the age of social media influencer. You know, if you're if you're active uh, on social media, you tend to see people um, boosting the same things. And it's like, here's my gummies. Here's my hair tool. Here's my makeup. Here's my thing. And you start to look, act and feel like all of those people. And a perfect way not to get lost in the shuffle is revert it back to who you were originally. What do you stand for? What do you believe in? What is your quirkiness? What do you what do you like to share? You know, people know that I have a type one diabetic son. I share that. I share our struggles. I share our, our wins with it. Same with me being 46 years old. I share that all the time. There are so many women that have that are more mature looking, not acting, because I'm not acting. <laughs> and that that feel small and they feel um they constantly feel like that there is that lid put back on them that they have to retreat back into the shadows and not live a big life but the minute that you do that you are not showing up for the people around you because i guarantee jackie especially with you girlfriend is that the minute that you decide not to come out of that shadow you are you are not inspiring one more person and show up showing up as um unapologetically and authentically you every day. Great advice. Really great advice. I love it. And you definitely demonstrate that, you know, you're, you're the real deal, you know, on, on camera, off camera, you're the same person. Um, I, I really do appreciate that because like you said, some people will come out and they'll act the part, but they don't live the part. So just uh, a few people showing you some love. You got Heather. She loves you. She oh, says you're such an inspiration. Uh, Shelly, Gives you those heart eyes. Brett Wagner, I just told a story with him the other day. He said, leave some center energy for us, for little folks uh, or old folks. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> uh, uh, Juliana, Sean Nelson is a great mentor. And Thank she you. says, uh, be yourself. We have another question. Um, back to Kay Swift. Uh, what's the best tip you have for building your tribe online? Because man, you you do it better than anybody I know. So talk that's about that a, a little question. bit. That's a good. That's a good. Good question, Kevin. Basically, going back to the authenticity. I'm always trying to provide value without expecting anything in return is humongous. Um, for example, in the capacity of the industry that I work in, you know, it's makeup and skincare. So I offer beauty classes online through Zoom or Facebook or whatever with stuff that people already have, not expecting a purchase from it. Um, always showing up authentically and every single day when your feet hit the floor is what value are you going to bring to them? I think a lot of times... Um, we show up and we just get our sales hat on and we think sell, sell, sell. But then also with working on social media, being up to date on the capacity of social media, what's going to work best? What's going to hide maybe the post that you do? What's going to push your post to the top? How are you going to show up in the market space differently than Joe Schmo next to you because he's doing the same exact thing? How, how is it going to be Kevin? How, what, what do people think of when they think of Kevin? What do they think of when they think of Sean is, you know, do they think of Sean as like the mascara slinging girl? I would hope not. And if they do, I need to change up my, I need to bring myself more to the table. Awesome. Great advice. Again, really great advice. Jackie says, thank you. And Marla Hutchison says, yes, she's the real deal. Love it. Um, you know, this is all great stuff. And guys, you know, whether you're in the, you know, a unique business, you're a martial arts school, you know, maybe you don't have a business, but how do you, how do you affect those? How do you serve those in your community and, and within your, your tribe, so to speak online? I think that that is so key. Uh, people buy from you, uh, not the product. Yeah, absolutely. They're, you're, when, yeah. Whatever we do, you know, it's, it's yeah. more about us and, and really what can we do for them? 
You know, that nobody, nobody really cares about what you know until they know how much you care. I know yeah. cliche, but it's true, though. so true. Yeah. Um, next question is, who are some of your mentors now and uh, how or why did you choose them? I love that. Um, one of my mentors actually is the CEO of our company. His name's Derek Maxfield. He um, built the company from scratch. And even though he is a multi-million dollar man, he always comes from service. And he's always a reminder to me that it, the money doesn't matter. It's serving people first. That's huge. Um, like I was saying before, personal development is a biggie for me. I am addicted to podcasts. I'm addicted to Audible. I don't read too much because nursing school ruined that for me. But <laughs> Audible every day, I probably do about an hour of personal development today, depending on what I need, um, which is so powerful. There is a social media coach. His name's Fraser Brooks. He's in the UK. He is actually um, my go-to guy. And he's my go-to guy because in our industry, I like to stay relatable like I was talking about before. And sometimes you'll get coaches who are kind of like out, you know, left field. And this guy isn't. He lives in Dubai. He's amazing. He's originally from the UK and he's just a real down to earth everyday guy. Um, he is my actual business coach. And I just am grateful for him every day because of the relatability that he brings. But every single day I'm tapping into somebody, whether that's Les Brown, whether that's, you know, Eric Worre, Fraser Brooks, any of those guys. Excellent. That's, I mean, you know, personal development, huge, right? Because you said it before, if you're not growing, you're dying. Talk about, you know, I, I've just recently, I, I'm not a huge reader myself, but I've been participating in a, a program called 75 Hard. I was introduced to Andy Frisella. Um, by the way, anybody watching, go watch Andy Frisella. And if you can't handle F-bombs, just tune that part out. But his <laughs> message is amazing. I have my son reading his book right now. Um, David Goggins, another one I'm reading, uh, You Can't Hurt Me Right Now. And uh, Jocko, you know, those are those are three of my top like people. Who are some of the top podcasts that you're listening to right now? I love Tony Robbins. I love that guy. And if same with the F-bombs. If you don't like that, stay, steer clear from him. But that motivates me. That gets me fired up. And there's one thing that I learned from that guy is that with the way I was raised and the way that my father was and all of that stuff, it's very easy for us to hold situations like that, people in contempt and 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 hate and you know anger and all of that stuff. And he said one day, he goes, stop, stop. That, that negative energy is just bringing you more a negative energy. You need to show gratitude. You need to show gratitude that he, that he fell in love with this woman. You need to show gratitude that he created you. So as much contempt as you're holding, you have to show equal amount of gratitude and then cut that cord, then sever that. And that was like so eye-opening for me is that this man that is has not been in my life really ever that I show so much gratitude and thankfulness for him because without him... And what he did and who he was and the upbringing that I, that I was raised in, I would never be who I am today. So I, I love that guy. I'm so grateful. And so that was a lesson that I learned from Tony Robbins pretty early on that really helped me. Anybody else you're listening to, uh, podcasts or audio books? I love, love, love audio books. My, um, my list is so long, you guys, like every day. I log in and I just have to tell you, I don't listen to one particular one every day. I just tap into what I need. So Mel Robbins is also another favorite of mine. She has the five second rule and it's really good for procrastinators. And that I, I really tapped into this because of my science brain. You know, when you're standing on the top of a high dive and you're a kid and you want to jump off and you go, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and you count to five or doing something scary, we tend to count one through five. Well, she teaches count from five down to one, because when you're doing that, it, it will absolutely help to decrease that anxiety. Because when you get to five, it's like, oh, do I do it? But if you go five, four, three, two, one, and you literally train your brain, when you get to one, you make a movement with your body. So you do, when you're laying in bed, you just go, okay, do I want to get up? It's Monday morning. I set my alarm for six. I really got to go work out or whatever, eat tacos, whatever your thing is, no judgment. You just go five, four, three, two, one, make a move and get up. And your your brain will automatically start to be trained to do that. And so I literally do that every single day, all the time throughout my day. If there's something that it's just as weighing on me, I think, man, do I want to go work out? No, I don't. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. And I make a movement, I have to do it. 
And that's genius. Genius for procrastination, Mel Robbins. Love it. Love it. That's great. Just got to get out there and get it done, right? Yeah. Uh, Juliana is, says Brendan Burchard. Burchard? Yeah, Brandon Burchard. Yeah, he's a good okay. one too. Excellent. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Hey, we have a lot of interaction today. Thank you guys for not only listening, but participating and asking questions. And thank you, Brett. Uh, loving the info, you know, coming from a, a totally different background here, but still getting some good info. Jill, uh, always, you know, saying that, that Sean's keeping it real, being honest, always approachable. Um, you know, for someone who sounds like we've got a lot going on, you know, you got three kids, teenagers, uh, you're married with your husband, you got to make time for each other, you got this business with 15,000 women uh, that work under you. Talk us through what your day is like. You wake up and, and, and walk us through a typical day. I know that sometimes it's a little all over the place, sure, but what's a typical sure. day like for you? Well, my kids are older now, so they are pretty self-sufficient as far as school and all of that stuff goes. So if you have littles out there, be patient because the time is coming where you don't have to have so much, you know, here's your snack, here's school, turn it on, <laughs> that kind of thing. So that's actually been a really um, good transition with my husband and I, too, because we get to date again right now, you know social distance dating, we find anywhere that's open that we can go. But that's, but that's what we're doing, which is, has been kind of fun because we feel like we're 19 again. But my day consists of, honestly, um, I do something called gratitude journaling every single day. And I have a notebook next to my bed and I sit up in bed. And even before I get out of bed, I write something that I'm grateful for um, as it has already happened. So I'm a big law of attraction manifestation geek. And so I might write something that I'm so excited to help 10 additional women today in my business, or I'm so grateful that um, my daughter was able to get into a certain school she wants to get into. So I write it and I show gratitude and speak it as, it, as if it has already happened. And um, this is something that has helped me repeatedly over the years. I've probably been doing this for about five years now. Um, I'm a Reiki two level healer. I'm big on energy. And so that I just, I so believe in. And I did that after nursing. And so that I start out with, and then I have my coffee, I check my messages, and then I start my team activity, you know, whether it's whatever my, our theme is for the day, when helping women train, return private messages, and then operate my own business. So I do makeup and skincare classes um, you know, in private rooms for women. And honestly, I would say 90% of my job is having one-on-one -on -one conversations with women and getting them over the hump of whatever their, their self-affliction is on why they are not making that next move in their business or that next move in their life. And it's not all business related. It has a lot of things to do with, um, you know, self-doubt and self-esteem issues and um, past past relationship issues, parent issues that is literally holding them back from showing up as the best that they can. Um, and then I make a point to put my phone down about six o'clock unless we have a night meeting and we cook dinner. We have family time until, you know, everyone goes to bed. And then I actually hop back on probably about nine to 11 to return some uh, messages for my girls that are, you know, in a different time zone that, you know, international girls. And uh, yeah, then wake up and do it all over again. I literally still after, it'll be eight years um, in July or in August this year, and I still get butterflies and still get excited to connect with all of these women. It's like literally the best job on earth. It's a dream. Well, when you find your passion, you know, it's just so easy and it, it, it really consumes you. It becomes you, um, that helper in you, right? And and that that, you know, desire to grow yourself, but that desire to grow within yourself comes from helping other people. And that cycle just continues. It's, it's just such a, a powerful thing. And, and I love, you know, you talked about writing things and, and, and talking yourself into things, uh, uh with gratitude in advance. Um, I myself have kept a, I call it a victory list, um, for the past probably 12 years, people think I'm weird. Cause like, I'll just like, something will happen. Like, even if I have lately, it's even if I have lunch with a friend that I haven't seen in a while that goes on my victory list, you know, time has become so much more precious. And I love that you brought up the fact that your, your husband, you and your husband still date, right? Yeah. You guys have been married 20, 20 years, 20 years in July. Yeah. And I mean, that is so huge because in this 
day and age, 20 year marriages are far and few between. Yeah. Um, I'm, and you know, our kids are also, you know, older, right. 15 and, and 18. And, and so, yeah, they get, they get to kind of do their own thing and we get our time again. I, I always wondered what it would be like, um, as our kids get older and they, they move out, you know, oh. I was never worried about if we would like each other, but yeah. like, yeah. What, what are we going to do with our time? Because like yeah. so your time is consumed with your kids. Now it's, you know, we're able to consume it with each other. Yes. Um, more more a love. Miss, a lot of people miss that. You know, I came from a home where my mom stayed because of the kids, you know, for so long. And I'm a big believer that being a spouse is completely different than being a parent. Those are two different jobs, you know, and you got to, um, I don't want to ruffle any feathers, but without you guys, together the the kids would never exist so the spouse needs to be the priority not the kid the spouse always because if this is happy this this other end is going to be happy and just always never losing that never losing that fun and, and i look at it too um because uh, you know having having a daughter you know i want her to have someone that loves her the same way that I love my wife. Yes. I want someone to want to teach her like she's a, you know, the greatest thing in the world. Yes. And I have to be that example for her, how she has to be treated. I also have to teach my son how to be a man yes. and how to be a, a loving man and to grow up to be a loving father and husband. You yeah. know, um, my, my dad worked a ton. My parents are still together. I'm, I'm, I think they're going to be like 48 years or something. Oh, and that. it's crazy, like uh, crazy, <laughs> a different story for a different time. But, uh, you know, one thing that, that, you know, I've always appreciated is that they, they, they've stuck together, they've stuck it out and, and, you know, they're all three of their kids are gone and out of the house. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's interesting what you learn as you get older too, or what you realize that you've learned even without being taught. You know, we, we, we learn by example. We learn by watching. And again, going back to uh, your relationship with your husband, your relationship with your kids. I know you have a very strong and tight family. Um, I, I could just, I, I just, I sense it. I feel it. I've seen it. Yeah. So, you know, but that's powerful because they will grow up that same way. Right. You know, and, and take right. that with their family. And like Kevin was saying earlier about breaking cycles in the drug and alcohol world, it's the same in all the worlds. You know, we're, we're all raised a certain way. But but if you were raised um, less than what you want for your own family, you're in charge of breaking that cycle. It's a it's a tough ass job, but but it's absolutely doable. And if you are the cycle breaker in your family, keep going. Just keep going because you're giving such a gift for your kids. That's so awesome. Well, we're getting ready to wrap things up. And I just want to take a minute to uh, to remind everybody that, you know, Sean, the reason that I had you on the show, I, I chose, um, you know, more than 50 people to be on the show over the course of, of 2021. And I, I, I chose you because one of the most important things is that I know how good you have made my wife feel mm -hmm. and, and, and the way that you have given her a good example um, your energy, you, you talk about, you know, aura, uh, you just have it. And I'm just so, I'm so proud to know you. I'm so grateful, uh, that you're out there doing what you're doing for all of these women. I mean, like such an impact over the world. Uh, but really the, you know, the number one thing is the fact that you impacted the person that I love most in this world, my wife. I, I really, I love you for that. So thank you so much for all that you do and continue to do. Uh, you've gotten so much love from your fan club out here. Uh, so uh, Marla says, love watching you both. Much love to both of you. Thank you. Uh, Kelly Fitzpatrick, Sean Nelson has the best energy. She totally does. And, you know, it's just, it's great to be surrounded and to, to have you in that circle. Um, so I, I truly do appreciate you. And what I want to let you do is just give uh, uh, the last bit of advice, um, what advice do you have for people watching this now or will watch later? Uh, leave us with just a little bit more motivation to finish the show. Absolutely. Um, stop living small. Stop living small. I think so many of us um, have been put into this cookie cutter mold of who we're supposed to be when really your spirit and your soul knows um, what, you're, what you're desiring. And if you show up to your job every day, show up to your business, show up in your relationship and you have the pit 
um, that, you know, we've all felt at one time or another, listen to that pit, fix that pit, um, show up boldly, show up differently and don't be scared. Get over, get over yourself, get over yourself already. <laughs> get, get over yourself and be extra. Yes. Right? That's what kids would say. Be Bear extra. Glitter, do the unicorn <laughs> things like live loud, dance on the freaking table already. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. All right. We got a couple of quick, Gabby, this is more park. Thank you. David <laughs> Starachi, one of my, uh, one of my instructors that, man, I can't wait to have you on the show. Great interview. Thanks for sharing yourself with us. You're a force. Um, Sean, thanks again. So, so much love and appreciate you guys, everybody watching today, please share this video. So more people can hear Sean's story. More people could be motivated and inspired by her. And I look forward to seeing you guys each and every Monday right here at, uh, we started at noon Pacific Standard Time. Here's some here's some upcoming guests, just so you guys know. Next week, I have the pit master, John Hackleman. So if you all know uh, from the pit martial arts and fitness in uh, San Luis Obispo, uh, trainer of Glover Texera and Chuck Liddell, Court McGee. Uh, this guy is one of my favorite karate guys ever. So it's going to be fun having him. I got Derek Freider, Chris De Palma, Hillary Brooks, and Robbie Beard, just to name a few. Uh, but I can't wait to do this again next week. Sean, thank you so much. Thank it's you. Been, it's been so a privilege much. and an honor. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great day, guys. This is Master Flame with Master Motivation. Uh, please check out our Facebook page. You're already on it, probably. Master Jason Flame. And I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. I don't do TikTok. I got to learn how to do. I got to learn how to do TikTok. But check down below guys, follow me and share these videos. I'll have this video up on YouTube as well later on tonight. Uh thanks again. Go out and make a difference. Thanks Bye, John. Guys.